Hello everyone and thank you very much for watching. This is me Mr. P. When you're having your home lab, eventually you will have to go and start updating all the services that you're self-hosting inside your home server, inside your home cluster. In my case, for example, I have my free Proxmox nodes and every week or so I need to go and log in in each of them and keep them up to date with most recent updates, security packages and upgrade them and etc. That is not a big deal when I need to do on a free separate nodes. But what if you're running a bunch of Linux, uh, Linux virtual machines, a bunch of LXC containers, you need to go and update 10, 15, 20 of them and that task becomes quite tedious, it becomes quite boring and you want to automate this. To automate all this, the best answer will be use Ansible. And in this video, I will show you the very basic setup of the Ansible. Ansible can do way more than I will show in this video. What Ansible is capable to do, if you want to find it out, find that out, I will leave a link to the Ansible documentation description below, where you will find all sorts of stuff and examples and commands that Ansible can run using Ansible playbooks and automate all the setups of LXC containers and VMs and everything else. Just to keep this video very user friendly, very beginner friendly, I will just create a simple Ansible uh, playbook to go and connect in each of my Proxmox nodes to go and update and upgrade them. So to do that, first thing I need to create myself an LXC container. You can create an LXC container or a VM, it depends which one you want to use. I will use LXC container to get this running. So we'll create LXC container with the name Ansible, we'll provide the root password. Under templates, I will choose Ubuntu 24-4. Under disks, inside the NAS, for 8 gigabytes is fine. One core, 512 megabytes of RAM, that's okay. DHCP, everything stays by default, and I will press finish. So right now, Proxbox is creating my LXC container. So let's wait for a second or so for this to finish. LXC container has been created, so I'm just going to click on start and wait for Proxbox to start my LXC container. That will take a couple of seconds or so. So let's see when it's online. Here we go. So I'm going to connect into this LXC container. Next step, what I need to do is update and upgrade all the packages inside this LXC container just by running a command apt update and double ampersand apt upgrade y. And next thing, what I can do, uh, daisy chain the commands and I will say apt install Ansible. And I need to install the package called SSH pass dash y. So while it's running, I'll explain what we're doing here. So we are updating and upgrading the packages. And then I'm instructed to install Ansible and install package called SSH pass, which allows Ansible to log in via SSH into other machines and run commands via SSH. Ansible installation is completed. Just to check if Ansible is definitely working, I can type command Ansible, press enter. And if I'll get the help me a page, uh, this means Ansible is running. So next thing what we need to do is to create the inventory file for Ansible. The name for that inventory file can be anything you want, but it needs to end with .ini extension. In my case, I will use inventory.ini and in here I can start adding the IP addresses of the machines that I want to be automatically updated and upgraded using Ansible. To specify a group of the machines, uh, you need to put the square brackets and I'll call this Galaxy. So and below the word Galaxy, I will specify IP addresses of all the machines I want the Ansible to go and automatically update and upgrade. This machine will be 192.168.178.130, which is going to be this, PV01. Next one I do believe is 36 and the last one is 80. Let's double check. So this is 36 and this is 80. So this is my PVE1, PVE2 and PVE3. So I have this created. You can carry on creating, for example, servers. Next one will be, let's say, IoT devices, IoT devices. And you just keep adding the IP addresses below and running the playbooks, which we'll show in a second. You can specify which one to use or you can use all of them in one go. So we're going to leave like this. So I have my inventory file created. As you can see, you just name of the group and then three IP addresses representing PV1, 2 and 3 for me to use. Next thing, I need to create a playbook. Playbook can be named anything you want as long as it makes sense what the playbook is re representing and it needs to end with .yml. So in my case, I will call it Galaxy, Galaxy-Update YML. And just to speed this process up, I will go and I will paste 
the playbook instructions from my main Proxmox cluster. So playbook starts with the dash name that you specify what name this playbook will do and this name will show up inside console output when the playbook is running. So in my case, I named it update and upgrade Proxmox. Next, uh, what kind of host you're gonna use? I will delete that and I will put Proxmox. Did I name Proxmox? Sorry. I need Galaxy. Okay, uh, let's name it. Let's name it again. Same thing. So Nano Galaxy update. That's fine. Let's delete that. Galaxy. I named it Galaxy. So I need to specify host Galaxy. Or if I want to include all of them, I just type word all and it will go and include all the groups inside the inventory file. So in my case, I would name it Galaxy. So I'll leave it Galaxy. And then you put the uh, instructions called task. And below that, this is where you add the tasks and you can add as many tasks as you want. First ask what the pro Ansible needs to do. It needs to go and update uh, packages. In, in this case, I'm instructing that I'm giving a name and then saying you need to run apt, app, apt, and then update cache equals yes. That means pretty much you go and update the packages. And the second command, uh, with the name upgrade all packages I, I instruct in Ansible to run apt and upgrade dist which is distro update the distro and you can specify upgrade type out from a bunch of the bunch of kind of variables in my case I just named dist just to make sure that it updates everything you'll find more uh, configurable uh, variables for upgrade instructions in a description you'll find a link to Ansible documentation so that is that. I'm going to press Ctrl X to close, Y to write, Enter to confirm. So that is added in, and now we can go and run the command. How we're going to tell Ansible to run the playbook is quite simple. We just type Ansible dash playbook, space, we provide the playbook name. In my case, it's going to be uh, galaxy update.yml. Then we need to instruct what kind of inventory or host file it needs to use by typing dash I space and inventory file name. Like I said, this name galaxy.yml and this name can be whatever you want. Actually, hold on, let's, let's do this just to make sure it's not being blocked by my webcam. So Ansible da dash playbook space galaxy dash update dot yml we're specifying the file and next ansible will use ssh connect into each of these nodes and we haven't provided the password there is a way to provide this the ssh key to make all this connection work but that requires a bit more configuration and just to make this video as simple as possible to follow we're going to use password instead of ssh keys but if you're setting up this in a production environment with a bunch of stuff running inside your proxmos cluster etc i do recommend i do encourage to use um, ssh keys and you'll find out how to use them by going through the ansible documentation at the link in the description below just to simplify this video i'm going to use a password but if you're running this in a production environment you need to set up ssh keys so to specify Ansible that, look, you need to ask for a password, you just type ask dash pass. So Ansible playbook will run this playbook using this inventory file and will ask a password to connect. I will press enter to run, enter my password, press enter, and it will go and run this playbook and straight away I get the errors. And this error is showing up because we're using a password, but there is no fingerprints created for each of the nodes. To create a fingerprint is quite simple. You need to go inside the Ansible VM or Alexi container, whichever you set it up. And I will use root add. And then the first thing I will connect into this machine. I will create a fingerprint. Connect is successfully connected. Next, I will connect to next machine. Connect finger, create a fingerprint. Connect, uh, yes. And the last one was 80, I do believe. Create a fingerprint password in just to make sure that Ansible do have or this LXC container have success, can successfully connect to each of the nodes. So that's done. Now I can go back and run this command again, provide the password, press enter. And now I can see how Ansible running this playbook. So it's connected and gathered the facts about the machines, went and updated and upgrade, updated all the packages. Then it went and tried to upgrade all the packages, but because there was no changes from update, it skipped the upgrade. As you can see, it came back and it says, we went and done three tasks per, per um, machine. So one, two, and three, and no changes. No changes means that there's nothing being updated and upgraded. Just to show you what's gonna happen if you go and update and upgrade, I think one of my machines might need an update. So I will just go here and include that. 
and I'm including my Docker virtual machine. Actually, no, let's include the Docker virtual machine. Or let's include uh, another node. So we'll include the another node. So I can say Proxmox prod node one. And now we can go and run a Ansible playbook again. So in this this time it will go and run fire three of them. As you can see, fingerprints not being created. That's okay. So it's failed on the first node. It's going and doing on others. Oh, okay. There was a package updates happening, but nothing upgraded. Okay, SSH. Not Mr. P. Sorry. Let's connect to my production Proxmox node. Create a fingerprint. So Amberstone is being connected. Let's go and run Ansible playbook again. So this time it will automatically connect on all four nodes right now. Let's wait for a second for that to finish. So it's going and connected to my product Proxmox, uh, main Proxmox node. And yeah, I do have a problem with the mounts. That's fine. It's done a changes and that's it. So everything is updated and etc. So as you can see, right, this is where showing change has been done. And if you will get some sort of errors, it's going to show here in the red color, like for example, failed, unreachable and etc. And this is how Ansible basically automates all this. So instead of going in each of the nodes and running command into node one and then command in node two and command in node three, you can create uh, Ansible playbooks and you run all that. And to even make this even more simpler, instead of going and um, and running the command like that, I will copy all this. Okay, okay. I will copy all this like that. Copy. And I'll create another file, which we name, uh, for example, update proxmox.sh. And I will put the uh, hashtag exclamation mark slash bin slash bash, paste this command, save it by pressing Ctrl X, then Y, then enter. And next command I need to write is chmod plus lowercase x and the name of the file update proxmox.sh, which makes this file executable. And now I can log in into this and enter like that. Press enter, enter the password, and it will go automatically and get this done. And this is how I keep my Proxmox cluster and all the service up to date when I when the time comes, or even when I'm not inside my house, I'm somewhere out and about. I connect to Remina using Cloudflare Tunnel, and I get all the IOS system updates and upgrades done this way to make sure that my system is up to date with all the security updates and everything runs smoothly with all the green colors. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found this video very useful. If you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing or just at least click like, which you will find just below this video. And in the description section, you will find all the documentation that you need to visit and you need to go and check it out if you want to bring Ansible to even higher level of automating your setup inside your home lab. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.